Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be evaluating an expression. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications and let's get started. So we're given x plus y plus z plus w is equal to zero and we're supposed to evaluate x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed plus w cubed divided by the quantity x y minus z w multiplied by the quantity z plus w. Okay, cool. So there's a couple ways to go about it. You know, you can just go ahead and, for example, isolate x plus y on one side and have the z plus w on the other side. And then you can just go ahead and proceed from there. Just cube both sides and go. Or you can do it a little differently. So I'm going to show you a couple different methods here. Let's start with my favorite. My favorite method involves cubing the whole thing. Why? Because it's fun. Now, you're going to have four terms, you're going to cube it, and there's going to be a lot of interesting math here. Okay, so let's get started. What am I going to do? I'm going to take this expression, and always remember that the sum of four quantities is zero. That's an important fact. And we're just going to go ahead and cube that expression. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. Now, what happens if you cube zero? You're going to get zero, right? Okay, cool. So when we cube this expression, we should also be getting zero. Now, let's see how we can cube it. Well, is there a formula for the the cube of a sum with four terms, well, you don't need a formula for everything, right? You can use the power of substitution. You can break it down into x plus y and z plus w and then go from there. So if you use that, you're going to get something like a plus b quantity cubed, which is easy, right? From binomial theorem. Remember, the coefficients are 1, 3, 3, and 1. And we've done some problems that involve these kinds of expressions. So let's go ahead and expand this. So I'm going to go ahead and first cube the first term. And when I say first term, I'm basically referring to x plus y here. So x plus y cubed plus the second term is going to come with a 3. And then the power of x plus y, which is the first term, is going to go down. That's the binomial theorem. And the other term is just going to appear and increase in power while the other one decreases. So then we're going to get 3 times x plus y. That is going to be first power. And then you see the symmetry here, we have the 3, 3. And then finally, we're going to end with the cube of z plus w, which is the second term. Okay, so this sum is also also equal to zero. Okay, now you can expand all of this and just come up with a crazy expression. That's not what we want. We want something more organized. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to focus on these two expressions first. And they're kind of similar because they're both um, the cube of a sum. And what I'd like to do is, and I've used this identity in other videos as well. You'll probably remember if you've seen the previous videos. I can expand this in a meaningful manner. Instead of just writing it as x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed, I can just go ahead and write it this way. And this makes more sense, in my opinion. x cubed plus y cubed plus taking out the 3xy as a common factor helps us, plus x plus y. I mean, times x plus y. Okay, cool. That's for the first one. And then for the last term, which is kind of the same thing, right? With different variables, it's going to look like this. z cubed plus w cubed plus 3zw times the quantity z plus w. All right? Now, this is not the whole thing, obviously, because we have two more terms in the middle, which we're going to take care of in the second row, because it didn't fit here. It's way too long. Even if you don't distributes completely, right? Okay, so what am I going to do for the terms in the middle? Notice that they have a common factor, uh, which is 3 times x plus y times z plus w, right? And then when you take that factor out, you're going to get something fairly interesting here. And this is actually real fun because why? Because you'll see. Okay, so it's going to look like this x plus y plus and then the second one is going to bring z plus w. Now, why did I say this is fun? Because look at that. x plus y plus z plus w is equal to what? Zero, right? It's been given and we use that fact here too. So this is equal to zero. Therefore, the whole product, that's the power of zero, power of nothing, right? Okay, so this whole thing disappears. Nice. And we know that this is equal to zero. Beautiful. Well, it is nice, but how is that going to help us evaluate our original expression. But notice that certain things are popping up here. For example, I already got the x cubed, y cubed, z cubed, w cubed. So it makes sense if you put those all together. Okay. 
So if you put it all together, it's going to look like this. Oopsies. X cubed plus Y cubed. Uh, and I can probably start here so I can make more room. X cubed plus Y cubed plus Z cubed plus W cubed. So I'm taking the cubes first. And then the two terms. Now, take a look at these two terms. Let me go ahead and write them. 3XY, X plus Y plus 3ZW, Z plus W. Now, they seem to have a common factor of 3, but there's more than that because we have another identity we can use. And that is, that is what? The same one, X plus Y plus Z plus W is equal to 0. Look at that. Because X plus Y plus Z plus W is equal to 0, then I can basically write X plus Y in terms of Z, Z and W. How? Well, basically, I can replace X plus Y with the opposite of Z plus W. Why? Because they add up to 0, so they're opposites. Cool? Okay, fair. Now, from here, I should be getting something like this. Minus 3XY times Z plus W plus 3ZW times z plus w. Now, since this is equal to zero, this is what I'd like to do. Now, if you go, go to my original expression, we have the sum of the cubes in the numerator, and the bottom kind of looks familiar, and I kind of got the z plus w here. So it makes sense if you put the z plus w's on the other side. So we're just going to add and subtract, whatever. And it, we should be getting the following from here. So because we're going to negate the second part, right? So it's going to give us, this is equal to, the opposites, 3xy times z plus w minus 3zw times z plus w. We no longer have zero because we have now terms on both sides. Cool. Now, we're getting there. Now, the sum of the cubes, basically, then, can be expressed. Now, at this point, you can do the following. You can just go ahead and substitute this and then simplify there. But I'd like to substitute after I simplify. So I, I'd like to sum, uh, simplify first. How am I going to simplify this? Now we have more common terms. So we can take take out three times the quantity z plus w. And it's going to give me xy minus zw. Yep, that's fun, right? Well, we're almost there. Why? Because our expression has that part in the denominator and the other part in the numerator. So what is that supposed to mean? In order to get our expression from here, what I can do is basically... I can divide both sides by z plus w times xy plus zw, and that should give us what we need, right? This is what we're looking for, right? Okay, so this is our original expression, not the original one, but the one they're asking for, and this is going to be 1, so the answer is going to be 3. So basically, the expression that we've been looking for is equal to 3. Okay, oopsies, I think I just accidentally picked the highlighter. Here we go. So the answer is three. Good. This would normally bring us to the end of this video. But this doesn't end here. Why? Because I'm going to show you another method. Remember, I told you that I was going to show you a couple methods, but do you mind if I show you three? Well, the second method is kind of like the first method, because remember what I told you, what I told you at the beginning. I said that, okay, instead of just cubing the whole thing, we can just go ahead and isolate x plus y, and then cube both sides. So you could also proceed like this, like cube both sides and, you know, plug in some stuff and you, you'll pretty much get the same thing. So I'm not going to really go all the way to the end because this is kind of straightforward, hopefully. If not, please let me know. But the third method is actually one of my favorites because it involves substituting. And I know some people are going to like this. Okay, here's one fact that you need to remember. Even though we did a lot of algebraic manipulation, so on and so forth, notice that the answer does not depend on individual values of x, y, z, w. Only depends on the fact that the, their sum is zero, right? So if I can find three numbers that add up to zero, I mean four numbers. Did I say three? Never mind. I meant three, four numbers, right? Okay, so if you can find four numbers, like what? Well, suppose x equals one, y equals one, z equals one, and w equals negative three. Beautiful. Their sum is zero, isn't it? Okay, cool. Now, what I can do is I can take those values and substitute into the expression. So what is that going to look like? 1 cubed plus 1 cubed plus 1 cubed 
plus negative 3 cubed, that's going to be my numerator, divided by z plus w, which is 1 minus 3, times xy minus zw, xy is 1, zw is negative 3, but that should be a positive 3. Make sense? Because it's supposed to be xy minus zw, so it's 1 minus negative 3, 1 plus 3. Cool, that makes sense. Cool, this is like a negative 2, this is like a 4. So we get a negative 8 at the bottom. Let's calculate the top. It's going to be 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3, and this is going to be negative 27. So it's basically, and negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. It is negative 24 divided by negative 8, and that happens to be a positive 3. And that's my third method, and this really brings us to the end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video tomorrow at the same time. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.